That dashboard right behind me took me about five minutes to build. And here's the backstory. I'm currently building an MVP, a minimum viable product, and that should include a dashboard. And I had two requirements for this dashboard. First off, it needs to be easy to use, whatever framework I use to make the dashboard. And two, it needs to look really, really good. So what do I use to build my dashboard? And then I remembered, wasn't there a really nice Vercel template? And Vercel provides some templates, if you didn't know, with a lot of different pages for like e-commerce, for chatbots, for documentation pages and so on. And in here, I remember seeing this right here, an admin dashboard template with Next.js, Tailwind and a library I didn't know before. Let's take a look at the demo and go to the playground. And what is this? This looks really, really good. How did they do that? I want that for my own app. And so I tried implementing this dashboard into my own apps for my own kind of data. That doesn't have anything to do with money, but let me show you. Let's create a new test set. Let's call this my dash set. And um, this doesn't really matter. I just want to show you the dashboard we get to once we create that test set. As you can see, this looks super clean out of the box and it takes like five minutes to implement. I'm gonna show you that here in a second. We can see a beautiful dashboard with multiple lines. We can see the legend right here. And this is supposed to represent different React components like a checkout version one, checkout version two and checkout version three that we just compare to each other in case of impressions, clicks or conversions. It's not too important. And just take a look at this chart right here. That is the important part that you can also implement into your apps within like five minutes. We can see the dates at the bottom, the amount of impressions at the left hand side. That is all automatically done for us. We do not need to worry about this. The only thing we do is provide the data. So the actual numbers and the names that you can see right here. And you can do this too within five minutes. It's crazy. So take a look at this. This is the important bit. We are importing something. Let me zoom in even further from at tremor slash react. And at first I was pretty skeptical. Like, is it actually going to be that easy? Or is it one of these weird libraries like MUI where you need to configure all this different stuff that I wasn't a fan of? So let's just import this and see for ourselves. So the data you could just see in the actual dashboard is mock data that we are generating right here, a generate data function where we have an empty data set. And for each date, I just chose from June 14th to July 17th, we are pushing for each checkout version, some random math number into this array. So for each entry in the array, we have the date. And then for each checkout version, we have a number. That is essentially what ends up in the chart. Let's return that data set and save it as a mock data set. And as easy as that, let's skip all the unimportant parts. This is the chart you could see in the dashboard right here. We are passing the mock data set as the data. And the only thing we still need to do is now configure the categories. And let's move this into a side by side. You can see, so you can see what this means. The categories right here, the checkout one, checkout two and checkout three. This is what's going to show up in the legend. That is what the data is for, the data points. So for each data point we list in those categories, we see a number right here. And I'm pointing on my screen, you can't see it. But you can see for each color, for each checkout version, that's the number. And that's the categories we pass in here. We can pass certain colors. So for checkout one, that's going to be indigo. For checkout two, that's going to be whatever, how this is pronounced. And then for version three, that's going to be emerald. We can disallow decimals, so only whole numbers. And that's that's pretty much it. Now, is it perfect? No, because you do give up control. I cannot really get into how this chart looks. It looks awesome out of the box, but also it's going to look the same way for other people. So in the end, all dashboards are going to look kind of the same if all people use this library, but it looks good out of the box. It saves you so much configuration work and same goes for the cards up here. They come from the same library. This is just how they look out of the box and they have a bunch of components, admittedly some way more useful than others. The chart charts super useful what you just saw this is the same chart they have line charts pretty useful but then i saw they also have something like cards now do i think this is pretty useful no i think these look pretty bad in fact then they have things like callouts i think these look pretty bad, especially with the border. I'm not a fan of that at all. But when it comes to like complex data, like charts, bar charts and graphs, I think this library comes in really handy. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Do you want to build an admin dashboard together? Like in a couple hour long video, we just built a Next.js dashboard together where we fetch data from a database, maybe using Drizzle or M because that's literally what I'm doing right behind me in the product. And it works really well where we just get data from a random source, maybe stored in a database and build a dashboard app together. Is that something you would like or not? Let me know in the comments and then I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.